about uh, teacher planners, but not any old teacher planner. So I have, in my years, spent way too much money on teacher planners, and the issue is not that they particularly cost so much, because I think especially like the custom-made teacher planners that you can get on like Etsy or even the Erin Condren ones, they're awesome. But being a secondary teacher, being a high school English teacher, I just don't use all of the parts of the planner. And so I find myself having this huge, amazing planner and I'm so excited about it. And then I don't use half the sections because I have like over 200 students. So I'm not gonna be using one section of like IEP notes or like a parent call log. I do all of that digitally. So I've tried to over the years find a way to really like customize it more and more. This year I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Wow. wow. <laughs> I'm gonna try and do a really simple bullet journal, which is a little bit intimidating. But let me tell you, I've done a lot of research and don't let it freak you out. I think it's actually super doable for everybody. So before I get into it, I wanna show you just a little bit of what I have, my journal, and I've kind of set it up. I'm gonna show you guys how I've started it. So I've just got like the very basic beginning set up so that basically I needed to get it, <laughs> I needed to get it started so that I could actually start using it. I'll show you all of the tools that I have um, right now. Okay. So before I really get into the setup of my journal, I just kind of want to go through what I have. So the blue one that you see here is actually what I'm using for my lesson planning, my teacher bullet journal, but I did get this pink one. I just wanted to show you, this is like the Michael's regular, kind of like Michael's brand, I guess, um, artist loft. And it was $5, I don't know, I think it was like $5.39 or something with tax. Um, but the cool thing about these is, it's all just dots. So if you can see, see the whole page is just made of dots. And it's really cool because um, the beginning does start with like a good page for like you to keep an index or like a table of contents. Then what I like about that is that it goes on for four like single pages. And then it starts here. This page would be like where you put your key, um, which is something I'm actually still working on. You'll see that in a second. But then the whole rest of it is just dots. I was a little bit worried that this was too, like physically small. Oh gosh. Whoops. <laughs> la la. I have a little girl having uh, lunch over here next to me, so you might hear some funny sounds. This one was is going to be my like personal life planner, but I just want to show you what it looks like and that it's artist loft. I start with my journal. I got blue because my school's colors are a blue, silver, and white. So I figured, yay, go school spirit. This was $5. I did buy from Amazon a little pack of stencils and they're cool. There are a ton of them that come in the whole entire pack. So far, these two are the only ones that I've used and I've really just used like these boxes um, and you'll see in a minute where I use those. Another thing that I bought is this amazing, okay, I spent more money than I should have on stickers, but it's because it's the Happy Planner. It was $19.99, but then I had a 40% off coupon and I had my educator discount. So that was kind of awesome, but it's a special teacher one. Absolutely love these stickers and I'll show you why. As I kind of flip through. You can see the ones that I've already used are a lot of these like pencils and there are apples. Um, I think I missed a page. There are some like to do things, little checklists. <laughs> She's so silly. I won't go through all of the pages, but you can just kind of see if you need to do like a, like a call log or something like that. I don't know if I'm even gonna use these. But I love these like glasses with the to do. Like how fun is that? And then these ones I really like. There's like Thanksgiving, all these different holidays and special days. These I really love. They're um, tab stickers. So I can like mark where like term one starts. And it wasn't that expensive with the coupon and the teacher discount. So if you're gonna go get something at Michael's and you don't already know this, get a coupon from michaels.com. They normally have a 40% off one regularly priced item. And then on top of that, you can get, I think it's a 20% teacher discount, bring your ID. I have colored pens. Somewhere in my life I have flare pens, but I they must be packed with all of my classroom stuff because I can't stink and find them. I have a ruler um, and I actually, this is an old one. It's got Marie from the Aristocats on it. It's clear, which I like, or it's translucent anyways. Um, so that's helpful when I'm actually like drawing some of my grids and stuff. 
And then I just have a regular old pencil and an eraser. And in this house, you know, my son's almost five. So Iron Man, obviously. I don't have that much of it done yet, but I just want to show you what I've done so far. Like I haven't even started my index because I'm not there yet. I mean, it's just gonna say like index or it might say table of contents because that sounds more English teachery. And it'll just have not even page numbers, but just like an order of things and what it is so that I can easily kind of find stuff. Here, I messed up when I was writing the word key. So I put a sticker over it. I've got my first two quarters kind of mapped out. And what I'm gonna do, um, we start mid-August. What I'm gonna do in these is just put like major school holidays or like major things that are happening on campus or breaks or stuff like that. Things that I'm going to need when I'm actually lesson planning. And then here I've got a space for term two. And then I've got January through June. I did January twice just because, yeah. I was being kind of anal retentive about it. Um. Here, I made uh, spots for my classroom setup. I'm working on a series of YouTube videos that are all about my classroom setup and how I set up the classroom as a high school English teacher. So I've got like different areas, like one of these will be my class library, one of the, and so I think each of these will end up translating to a segment on the YouTube series. But for now, I am still in the kind of like putting everything together and planning and for instance here, I'll write like my class library. And I know that in my library, I am going to want to put, I'm going to do a whole thing with cinder blocks. Uh, one sec, baby. And um, like wood planks. That's how I'm going to put together my thing. And then I want a read sign. So this is just kind of my way of like, if I don't do my classroom setup in smaller projects, it will overwhelm me entirely. If I just start really light with pencil, cause I know bullet journaling can be intimidating if you feel like you don't have very good handwriting, which I don't unless I try hard. As you can see, it's just, that's my normal handwriting and this is me trying hard. I was working on this and like we were watching TV at the same time. So I just go through and I can kind of erase. And there's nothing really fancy about this. I just wrote in all caps and then I like added a line to make it look fancy. Moving along. I am teaching 10th grade English, uh, quarters one and two. And those in our area are called high school English three and four. So quarter one, quarter two. So all I've done here is start to map out my units. I'm gonna start in the fall with a little mini unit on growth mindset because I've seen how well that um, just affects the learning of especially upper elementary kids. So I'm gonna do that here because I think it'll be a really good way to start the year. We start school on a Wednesday. So this one week is really only three days and I've just kind of like put in little clouds how long I want to do. Oh, no thank you, Angel. Then I'm gonna do a literary analysis boot camp, and this is something that I'm gonna start. I really wanna try rotations, uh, learning rotations, and so I'm pretty, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, you can use it, baby. So I'm gonna do a couple of weeks on literary analysis and just giving them like a toolkit and how to look at different types of texts. So not just written text, not just fiction, but also, thank you baby, also articles and other sorts of expository texts and poetry and even visual art like photography and paintings and songs and live performance or like recorded performance. Different lenses that they can look at those and then analyze those through, spend two good weeks deep diving into just analysis because I think that can be a really intimidating part uh -oh. of English is like, well, I don't know what it means. So this is like giving them ways to figure out what it means. I always do Lord of the Flies and we look at it from like the psychology and the dynamics of groups. So that's a good four week unit. It's a pretty big book. I do a lot of other stuff with that. And then the last little unit for a couple of weeks, I wanna look at creative writing. And then I'm also going to be doing, which you'll see on the next page, passion projects, which are like going to translate into a research and presentation of what their passion project is. So I'm, we're the Broncos, so I'm gonna call it Bronco Talks. My second quarter is going to start out with three weeks on Shakespeare with Taming of the Shrew. We also look at, um, I love the unit that I do with Taming of the Shrew because I look at, just like what makes something funny. I look at the fundamentals of comedy because kids so often, um, you know, modern students see Shakespeare and they go, I don't understand why that's funny. And so it's kind of breaking down different types of comedy, Mama. physical comedy, Mama. dry comedy, etc. Thank you. And 
Yeah, and they can kind of like pick apart the thought and the art behind the writing of this older comedy. Then Ellie Wiesel's Night, and then ending it out with a short story unit that is actually world fairy tales. I'm trying to find ways to bring, you know, the multicultural perspective in, in new and engaging ways. So it's gonna be world fairy tales three weeks on that because that's gonna have interwoven what I do. <laughs> What I do with their like Bronco talks in the first quarter will then translate a bit into the second quarter. So you can kind of see, I mean, I'm gonna put in some more like bullet point notes into here as I get a little bit further into the planning today, but that's gonna be like my unit kind of curriculum overview. Then I start to get into the nitty gritty of like their passion projects and how I want those to look. I have a ton of room for that. That's gonna be a whole YouTube series, so get excited for that one. The good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, the great teacher inspires. I just think it's a great quote and it's great for the passion projects. I was talking with one of my team members the other day about how she does book clubs because I haven't been in the English classroom for a while. And we were just kind of talking about how she wants to try and encourage kids, especially those who like to just fly solo with their books, to actually get into a group of kids. And so we were talking about doing um, book clubs. I know. <sighs> it says dinosaurs didn't read and now they're extinct. Dun, dun, dun. I think what we're gonna do is genre-based book clubs. Kids can read whatever they want. They're not like Baby. tied to certain books. There will be a group of graphic novels, a group of fantasy, um, nonfiction, no. maybe like no. <laughs> biographies, uh, and maybe one is like sports yeah. biographies. Like we might get real niche with this. It all kind of depends on what the kids want to read because I want book clubs to go throughout the whole course. I know, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> this way, if we can kind of go by genre, I think they might actually get more benefit out of everybody reading something different. No, thank you. Girl, you just want to draw on all my stuff, you stinker. The next thing, since I am going back into the classroom for the first time in a while, I set up a page of classroom procedures for myself because I need to be really intentional about this and I want it to all be in the same place. I got these cute little stickers, teaching is my jam. I am going to start listing out what I want my classroom procedures to be. I just wanted you to see my setup. And then I went through and every month of the school year has its own little grid. I'll go through and put numbers in all of this. And this is basically just so I can say what is going on that day. It won't have some very detailed um, lesson plans and then I can also make notes of like the different things I'm gonna need to take care of or like common assessments or things that come up. So I can kind of just have the months at a glance. And I went through January, just for the first term, the first two quarters. And here I've got a space for some ideas as they pop up. This cute sticker that says creativity is messy and I'm very creative, especially if you look at my hair. And then from there, I'm gonna go through now and each quarter is nine weeks and I'm going to set up my weekly lesson plan layout for each of the 18 weeks of quarters one and two combined. So here I go. So here's how I'm going to be setting up like my weekly spreads. I'll probably have some variation here and there, but I like these long columns. I know that I want to do like an intro to the course. I don't know what I want the rotation to be on. So I'll give myself a little bit of space to kind of figure that one out and I can come back to it. And then over here, probably um, show them like the online class resources. Cause I'm gonna do a lot of stuff on Google Drive, I'm gonna do a whole like a Google Classroom. So I wanna show them, start showing them how to do all that stuff. By here, I know that I want to be doing, and then here I would have notes for any like copies to make, for any um, assignments I have left to create or anything like that, any emails I need to take care of. Um, oh, here I would probably, actually probably here I would actually go over the syllabus. Kids change our, in our classes for the first few days just because of scheduling and trying to figure and like balancing the schedule and doing numbers and all that stuff. So yeah. 
And then I will do the following week and the following week and the following week. Um, somewhere in here, I will probably like, I don't know if it'll be under ideas. This could be like my back to school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rotations. <laughs> or like learning stations. And that's kind of yeah. where I'll flush out this idea. So some things like that. And then what I like about this whole setup is that I could even just say, okay, you know what? I, this is going to be too big for here. So forget that. I'm going to go here and I am going to say... Okay, so as you can see, this is how I would do just like a quick little setup. I mean, it's not all that fancy, but it does the trick. And I made it kind of cute. I like these stickers. It just gives me something fun to get excited about. I like cute stuff. It does the trick. It's here and now I can be like, oh, I know that one of the stations that I wanna have, station one, I want that to be something having to do with getting to know me. Station two, I don't know, something else. And what I like about this is it's all in the same place. I think I'm probably gonna add an idea that I really love is like a teacher dashboard. So I think I'll probably add that to like the front where you have like color coded stickies that are on here and you kind of say what they're for. And then I can use those like throughout the actual journal to like, I don't know, keep my life together. Oh boy, we've got a gorilla baby who is planning on this furniture. Well, hopefully that kind of demystified the teacher bullet journal. I'm sure that there are like very fundamental things that I'm doing like incorrectly, but I feel like this is going to work for me. Um, I would love to see what ideas you guys have and everything that you come up with to like make this work for you. It's all about simplicity and actual functionality. We have three more things to show you. The first is um, this book. Dot journaling, a practical guide. My sister got this for me as like a congratulations, you're going back into the classroom gift. And it's kind of awesome because yes, you can find all this stuff on Pinterest, but this, um, sometimes just having a physical 